I'm trying to push it down. Come down. Hello and welcome back to the channel. In my last video, I talked about how you could use avoidance, deterrence, and giving yourself more time to react to improve your personal security when you're solo while camping. And in this video, I just want to explore how you can sort of give yourself more time to react and a little bit more detail by setting up a tripwire perimeter alarm system around your camp. And the best thing is this thing only takes about 11 pounds. So it's really quite cheap to set up. Now, if you stick around to the end, I'll also show you my little secret surprise that I use for people as well. Uh, and that also gives you just a little bit more time. So in order to set up a tripwire, you need a couple of key things. And the first one is cordage. Now you can buy specialist tripwires that are made of Kevlar, but you really don't need to. You can make do with all the cords you have or much cheaper alternatives. Now the first one is this, which is Atwood. A micro cord um, and this is 1.25 millimeters thick and uh, you know it's got a breaking strain of a hundred pounds so it's plenty strong enough and it's quite thin during the day you, you might possibly spot this but in the dusk and the evening time you know this would just blend into the forest floor and you definitely wouldn't so this is this is a viable option uh, for this sort of size this is 125 feet um, and it comes for about you get this for about five pound 95 uh, and the actual spool whole spool weighs about 35 grams so it's not a bad option and that is that is viable there is also an alternative i prefer this is also by atwood um, and this is their nano cord now this is quite a bit thinner so this is 0.75 millimeters thick and it's got a breaking strain of 36 pounds so it's not quite as strong but it's strong enough for a trip wire um, and the beauty about this one is you get a lot more cord on the actual spool so this is a 300 foot spool so it's tiny really um, and that weighs i think it's 80 grams so it's quite light, 300 feet of cordage, um, and you do need quite a lot of cordage if you set up trip wires. If you want to put something out that's kind of 47 feet in every direction around you in a perfect circle, you, know, you would need 300 feet to do that. And you can work out the maths, do the circumference, the diameter type calculation. Uh, generally, I wouldn't have trip wires 360 degrees, but if you wanted to do that, you kind of need about 300 feet at minimum. There are other alternatives you can use as well. For example, you could use a fishing line. Now, that's even thinner and harder to see, uh, but might be slightly be harder to, to reuse you know, if, if you want to, because it is so thin. The other thing to bear in mind with fishing line is, is make sure you get the braided stuff because normal sort of monofilament line can stretch quite a lot uh, and you don't want your trip wires to stretch because if they stretch too much, they may not actually set off your alarm. So that's something you need to think about. The second thing you need to make a tripwire is something that makes a noise when the tripwire is activated to alert you that there's somebody there. Now you can be really low tech and just use what you've got. For example, you could use your kind of mess tins with a couple of stones or cooking utensils inside, hang that over the line and then they just kind of jangle, you know, when, when somebody hits that line. If you want to be a bit more prepared, you can take something like the, the sort of bells that people put on their dogs to track them in the undergrowth uh, because they are relatively lightweight and they're quite noisy as well. So they're quite effective. Just bear in mind, you know, when you pack those, if you don't pack them properly, you will be jingling and jangling all the way through the woods. So maybe not the best idea. Now my personal favorite is something like this. Now this is a personal attack alarm. Now when I get these, I always make sure that it's one. It's the type where you have the handle on one side and then the, the pin that activates it directly on the other side so you can secure it and it pulls nicely. Now with this one, I have taken the batteries out so this won't sound. So when we're doing our practices today, I'm just going to play a recorded sound over the top because otherwise yeah, we might get to the false activations and people might think someone's being attacked and, and call the police. So I don't want to have to deal with that. Uh, but the way this works is really good because you secure this end to the tree or to something we've got to attach it to. This end you attach to your, to your cord, to your, to your cordage. And then when the tripwire pulls, it pulls the pin out and then the alarm sounds. And these are about 120 decibels and it just gives out a continuous siren. So this will definitely wake you up uh, and potentially alert other people uh, that you've been in, in trouble as well. So these are a really good investment. Now the last batch I bought of these, um, I got three for eight pounds. So they worked out about two pound 96 each. So lightweight, cheap, loud, really effective. Now, if you have those two items, you already have the bare minimum to make an effective tripwire. But what I also recommend is you get a couple of these as well. And these are called closed eye hooks. Um, and all they do is they screw into a tree uh, and then that allows you to kind of root the cordage around trees so you can still activate and turn, sort of turn direction with them, work around the vegetation that's there already uh, and you don't have too much friction. 
because if you've got too much friction against the tree bark it could stop the, the trip wire from activating properly but you can use these to root them so that they do actually activate well and obviously you can kind of bend corners and things with them now if you do bend a corner um, i would recommend you try and keep it a gradual corner because if you put too many things like right angles in or go back on yourself uh, you know there's a good chance that the alarm might not trigger because the more angles in there the more friction and the less chance of activating so try and keep bends and just kind of work with the tree line that you have and if you need to you know, rather than have one long trip wire that goes all the way around you uh, use three different alarms and set up a triangle and have them as straight as possible have each side as straight as possible because that will give you the best chance of the alarms actually activating so the first thing i'm going to do is going to take my rape alarm i'm going to attach it to this tree now i'm going to attach it by going into this loop here and just inserting a small closed eye hook now although i'm screwing this into the tree and it will cause a small wound to the tree it's nothing the tree can't handle i've chosen a tree that is very healthy looking and also this is a very small screw it's about 30 mil and it's very thin so this is nothing that the tree can't not handle so all i'll do is i'll screw this in so that's tight that's barely through the bark okay now that now is is sort of secured so when this pulls this end this pin will come out what i'll do now i'm going to go over to the opposite end where i want the trip wire to finish and i'm going to work backwards and i'm doing it that way because i don't want to cut my string i want to keep my cordage in one spool so i don't have to replace my spool every time if we do it this way i only lose a couple of centimeters each time i set the trip wire up rather than having you know different lengths of, of kind of line left over the second stage is i've gone over to the tree where i want the trip wire to finish and what i'm going to do is I'm going to take my spool i'm going to use a 10 peg i'm going to secure that in the ground next to the tree okay now what this does it allows me to pull the cord out yeah, and again because i'm starting at this end i don't have to cut my line which is really important because i don't have to replace the line each time and all i'll do now is i'll work this back to the other end and secure it there along the way i'm going to secure it to another tree to show you how you deal with a, a turn or a bend uh, and i'll do that now so i'm just taking this down to this tree and obviously Obviously that spool is attached so I'm just pulling it along and it's just sort of unrolling really easily. Now the height you want to set these is actually knee height. When I set that alarm up it was too high, it should have been knee height. And the reason I did that was because I forgot. And also because I obviously tried to be easy and, and talk to the video. But really just below, just below knee height is where you want, so about this sort of distance. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my closed eye hook, I'm going to screw this. Oh, it looks like somebody else had the same idea here because there's some rusty old barbed wire from an army training session so i just have to watch that and be careful i just screw this in and again this tree's got a really thick bark so i'm barely going to get through the bark into the tree okay excuse cold fingers it's making it a bit harder for me okay that's now screwed in and just to show you how good that nano line is i've lost it completely where did that go Right, so I've got a line here. Just going to insert it through this eye hook. And having these hooks is also a really good way of spanning a longer distance as well. Because if you've got a wide distance between the end of the trip wire, your line will sag, which is no good. So you need to either use trees like this or alternatively make a stake in the ground if you need to. But natural trees are better because obviously they're not out of place people are expecting to see them they might get suspicious of a stake so i've gone back and corrected my schoolboy error and this now has been lowered to below knee height so all i've done now is i take the the line and I attach it to the end the pin that pulls out which activates the alarm now for the purpose of this i'm just going to stick it to the thick end here you probably want to kind of remove this thick cord and have kind of thin micro cord instead so it's less visible now when i'm going to tie the knot i'm going to tie something called a taut line hitch knot uh, and the reason for that is it allows you to adjust the tension afterwards and i'll show you separately how to do that in detail on a thicker piece of cord because it's really hard to see on this kind of uh, nano cord okay so to tie the taut line hitch knot we just take our cordage wrap it around the object that we need to secure and make sure you leave yourself plenty of, of a cord to work with we then wrap it over the top like this and then we take this end we go underneath the standing end and then we wrap this around the left hand side of this loop twice so you go once and then twice okay 
and that should look like that. We then take this, we hold it over the top of the standing end again, and then we just loop it around on the inside, and then we pull this nice and tight. Now once you tighten this rope, what's really good with this knot is you can adjust the tension on the strip wire by pulling this out. But what you can see is as I pull that tight, it doesn't actually slip back again. So you can really get good tension, but you can adjust it by sliding this way manually. So this is a really good knot for trip wires for tension line and also for just general guideline use and setting up tarps and things. Okay, once you've tied the taut line hitch knot, I need to leave that loose and go back to the other end and secure it at the other end. Okay, I'm back down the other end of the tripwire where the spool is. And what I'm going to do is rather than tie it off with a knot, I'm just going to wrap it around the tree a few times. And that way I don't have to kind of cut the string because if I tie a knot, I'm not going to be able to kind of untie it again because the, the cord is so thin, it's just really hard to unpick knots. So I'll wrap this around, that'll, be, that'll make it tight enough. And then what I'll do is I'll go back to the other end and set the tension properly. So I'll just do that now. So, just retrieve my uh, tent bag. Oh, just caught in a bark there. Right, okay, so. Just gonna lower that and just at the right height. do what I'll do is I'll just put this back down resecure it and I'll just cut off a bit of leaves so it's invisible right let's go back down the other end and we're going to tension this line this is why we need to use the taut line hitch knot because now I can just slide this along tension up like it was a guide rope Obviously, if you do it too much, like I just did then, then the alarm will go off. So it's just about setting it just right. Now, what you need to do, because this nano, nano cord is so thin, the taut line knot doesn't grab as tight as it could do. So what I'm going to do, just to actually lock it off, is I'm just going to tie a granny knot over the top to lock it in place. Okay, so this is the alarm here, and as you can tell, the line is tensioned nicely, because you can see this black bit out. But notice how quickly this nano cord disappears. Just start looking down. Can you still see that? Virtually impossible. I mean, literally from two, three feet away, I cannot see that. I notice as I've had to bend the line around the tree, I've done it on the inside of the curve. And that way, there's less friction against the tree. The trip wire can run freely and it's more likely to activate. My own little secret sauce to give myself just a little bit of extra reaction time over and above what the trip wire gives me is to wrap an inner cordon of micro cord around a group of trees I'm going to sleep between. Okay, first things first, let's get the cordon set up. So nothing special here, I'm just going to tie a quick granny knot on that end. Okay. I'm going to go I'm going to go over and I'm going to go under that one. Okay, I'm going to go diagonally across to about chest height for me. Over and under. Straight line across. Again, keeping this about chest height. I'm going to go under. Over. Now I'm going to go another diagonal back down. Ow, it's getting a bit hot that is. Right. Okay, and again. Under. And over. Right. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, again, I don't want to uh, 
break the string so I'm just gonna tie a quick knot like that and keep that relatively simple and then I'll just tie a couple more things around it so I don't need to cut or drop that down there okay yeah that'll, that'll be tight enough let's go back down to the trip wire see how long this gets gives me now I can't actually see where it is from here I know where it is because of the trees but I cannot see it let's see what happens Right, that's very good. <sighs> okay, I've got a signal. Imagine it's dark, so I don't know where the strings are. I'm trying to push it down. Right, this is what I'm still attached. I'd say that's a success. I'm knackered. <laughs> uh, that's quite effective, isn't it? Now, obviously, I'm kind of into the circle here, but I'm held back still. And if, if this was dark, I wouldn't know where these cables are. I wouldn't know what they were. I wouldn't know what was holding me back. I think this is a brilliant little method. I don't know why more people don't do this. Okay, full disclosure, as I was putting the line away, I realised that I actually snapped that line. Now that is a £100 test line, so obviously I really was trying to get through that. It wasn't just kind of a fake. And as you saw, I kind of paid the price because it sort of tripped me over and I hurt myself in the process. So it definitely did slow me down. Was it enough to actually give me enough time to get out my sleeping bag and react to it? I don't know. We'll have to have a look at the, the time when I edited it later on and see if it was effective or not. What I would say is 25 feet isn't very far. I typically want that out to be about 25 meters ideally, just to give me that extra bit of reaction time. But I'd like to hear your comments on what you think of this method. Is it worthwhile doing? Should I try a stronger string? But uh, overall, I think it definitely does work. It definitely does add seconds. Uh, whether it's enough, maybe it still needs a little bit of tweaking. Once again, I hope you thought that was useful. What I'm gonna do in the next couple of weeks is cover in more detail the kind of avoidance part and how you can use camouflage to actually you know avoid being detected and avoid getting any unwanted attention through just not being seen so that'll be in a couple of weeks and if you don't want to miss that video I suggest you just subscribe so that you don't miss it until next time